Okay, what's going on guys? Welcome to another Clubhouse. We've been doing about one a day um, and people have been loving them. Uh, people have been sending me messages, really appreciating them. What's up Jenna, how are you? Um, and uh, people, yeah, Jenna was one of the people who, you know, shared appreciation for it and many other people too. Most people catch the replays because of the time zones and of course, you know, it's a weekday and people have to work and that's fine. You can catch the replays on Clubhouse. You can catch the replays on YouTube and Instagram, all the good stuff. Yesterday was great. Uh, we had a lot of people, well, actually, a lot of people listening, but two people actually put their hand up to ask some questions. So again, guys, if you want to ask some questions, you absolutely can. Uh, but today, uh, I've been up since uh, my usual time, five in the morning, something like that. That's the other thing, guys. You know, get up early. Get up and get the um, the sunrise. As soon as the sun sets, go to bed. I'm normally in bed by, I don't know, seven, eight, something like that. I get up at five. I sleep very well. And I wake up feeling like a million bucks. Like I wake up feeling absolutely fantastic. And I was watching a, um, we'll get into the topic of today's video in just a second, um, which is your silence is not, the, your silence, the, the possibility of someone getting silence is not determined by their medical history, their age, where they live, their financial situation or, or anything like that. It's determined by their attitude. And that's just the cold hard truth, okay? I'm not gonna bullshit you. Your attitude has to be in check. And I know for a fact that people who are tuning into these clubhouses do not have an attitude problem because you're taking the time out to do it. You're very serious and you're very professional and, and you're acting like adults. But this is for the people who are probably gonna listen to the replay and you know, just people who need to take a look in the mirror and go, you know what, I could be doing better. I could be waking up at five in the morning like Liam. And guys, it's not hard. If you get up early in the morning and you eat well during the day, you know, did you ever wonder why you're, if you have kids, your kids have no problem having so much energy in the morning and waking up really early and, you know, generally being happy? It's because that's how you're supposed to be as well. You know, yes, they take naps in the day as well, but you know, you can do the same thing too if your life is structured right. Anyway, so let's get into it. Excuse me. Yesterday, wow, did you guys see all the messages yesterday? So, I've told you guys about this before. Sorry about the, uh, my nose, it's, it's freezing at the moment here. I told you guys about this before to follow Sally K. Norton and Lowox Grandma. So, Sally K. Norton is, she's got a book coming out um, called, I think it's called The Superfoods That Will Kill You, and it's about Oxalate. And uh, me and her have been playing a bit of tag, trying to do, I, I want to interview her for my channel. She said yes, but I've got to, um, uh, you know, organize that and get the times right. She also asked me to write a little subheading for her book inside the book. So hopefully she uses that. And that's cool. Um, the amount of people, and Lowell's grandma is a woman who is obviously a grandma who lives, she's hilarious. She's great. She lives in the uh, USA and she, um, she's been uh, telling people about her story and people who come to her when they, they think they're being healthy, having this Swiss chard and kale and legumes and quinoa and chia seeds and I mean, everything except bar literally bark off a tree they'll eat because they get told to by people who have no idea what they're doing. People should be in jail for suggesting the vegan diet. So let's go through a couple of the messages that I got yesterday because they are absolutely incredible. Okay, if you haven't heard this, I'm going to read it out. Um, let's go through it. I'm just going to open up my Instagram. Okay, I'm going to read this out to you. If you've already heard it, just, you know, this is a reiteration. This is a message I got from a woman I've never met before in my life. Liam, I told my boyfriend who started your course you were scamming him. Don't eat almond or spinach? Psh, whatever. Then I heard you say, if you like TMJ, then just keep eating them. I opened my ears and listened from there on out. I guess she had TMJ then. I cut out beans, nuts, and spinach. Yeah, spinach is like the worst thing. Popeye lied, by the way. Spinach will not make you strong. It'll put you in a wheelchair. In 10 days after cutting out uh, beans, nuts, and spinach, my, uh, in 10 days, my jaw did not lock to the side anymore and a very, very, very painful joint in my finger stopped hurting and the swelling went away. By the way, you know how I was talking about polyridiculo neuropathy, which, is a, um, it, which can cause tinnitus from oxalates pooling uh, in the nerve endings that sort of stem from your spine and from the top of your neck, okay, peripheral nervous system, central nervous system. There is such a thing as oxalate induced arthritis okay those swelling in your finger and all the pain and arthritis in your finger this is i see this all the time in people from the uk 
And the reason I think I see this is because people in the UK love their tea. Now, I would dare say that there is a, and I'll get back to the testimony in a second. I would dare say that there is more oxalate in tea than there is in coffee. Guys, everything has their use, okay? But don't overdo it. For example, let me give you a use for coffee. If you have a mold infestation in your body, whether you got it from food, home, doesn't matter. Mold often clogs up the bile ducts in your liver and gallbladder. The purpose of bile, okay, is to help kill parasites uh, and break down the fat and the meat that you consume, as well as many other things, okay? Now, if that's clogged up, you are not going to be able to break down meat properly. If you drink coffee, that will help the bile to move, okay? So that's a benefit. That's why some people say they feel better when they have coffee, and also they say when they quit coffee and eat meat, they have spikes and they have digestive problems. Bring the coffee back, deal with the mold, and then get rid of the coffee, okay? You can see there's a lot to it. Beating, beating tinnitus is, that's when people say to me, Liam, what is, just write the cookbook. What is the tinnitus cookbook? What do I eat? And I tell you again for the millionth time, there is no tinnitus cookbook. There is no cookbook for anything. This is, this is not Jamie Oliver, okay? This is not Jamie Effing Oliver. This is not, I don't know, Heston Blumenthal, whatever these cooks are. This isn't for enjoyment and this is not always a simple, it's not a linear process, okay? It's a process of elimination. It's a process of incorporating more nutritionally dense foods and it has to be done in the right order and it must be done slowly, okay? So back to this woman's testimonial. Um, in 10 days, my jaw did not lock to the side anymore and a very, very painful joint in my fingers stopped hurting and a swelling went away. 10 days, that's pretty quick. Like I wouldn't expect that, but good for her. Uh, I, I could not use my finger at all. He followed all of your program and has almost has silence on a regular. So I get from that, most days he has silence. Good on him. I have no idea who this dude is, but good for him. I get so many messages from people that say, hey, I got silence, thanks. It's like, what? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> like, I've got no idea. Who I get so many messages like this. Send me a video, please. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and then she says, I was wrong. You are not a scammer. You're a healer. We both thank you. Um, and so she goes, when I cut oxalates, my whole life changed, including the temporal mandibular joint dysfunction that I've had for over 15 years, 15 years. Now I spoke to a woman who's filmed me a video testimonial and I won't, I won't say her name obviously, but she's a lovely lady. And she was telling me that she used to work for an orthodontist. Maybe she's listening now. I don't know. Um, oh, she'll, she always listens to these, so she'll hear the replay. So if I get this wrong, you can tell me. She worked for an ortho, orthodontist for 10 years, I think. She said, or 15 years, I think. And she said that these guys were just vultures. Like, they were just absolute vultures. Like, they would always suggest to people, yeah, you need braces, and you need this procedure, and root canals are safe, and blah, blah, blah. Here, you need to pay me $3,000. And she said the patients would be like, are you sure? Like, I don't know if I need this. And she actually told me that, yes, she, it was a very similar experience working with um, orthodontists, endodontists, dentists, um, as it was going and seeing an ENT. Now, she said she is going to relay this information um, about what I've said about. And by the way, the TMJ testimonials, I get like five a day now because people say, yeah, this was me, by the way. It's like, great, let's keep them coming. Keep telling me. So she told me she went, um, she's going to, because she's retired now, I think. She'll go back and tell her friend, the orthodontist, you know, you, you don't have to give these people the jaw alignment, the Invisalign, like these expensive surgeries that never work. Why? Because you're not dealing with the root cause, which is in this most, most cases is oxalate toxicity. And Sally K. Norton talks about that beautifully. But what do you think is realistically going to happen? If she goes back to that orthodontist and says, hey, I know you make $3,000 a day, Revenue, not net. I don't know, maybe, maybe a doctor, like dentists make a lot of fucking money, like a lot, depending on your speciality. I know you make, you know, let's say 30, 35,000, 20,000 to 30,000 dollars a month, which is not unrealistic for a dentist, depending on your speciality, by the way. Um, and dentists can attest it. One of my best friends is a dentist, and he knows, like, they're so fucking rich. If you tell them, hey, you don't need to do these expensive surgeries and blah, 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 you can just tell them to change their diet, what do you seriously think they're going to say? Oh, that's amazing. Hold on, guys, cancel all the surgeries.
get all my patients in here. I'm gonna teach them for free. Just change your diet and you can avoid these surgeries. Are you out of your fucking mind? Not, not, not this lady, but the person who thinks that doctors have the best interest of the patients in mind. Let me give you another story. Sean Baker, okay? By the way, Sean Baker, his company used to be called MeetRx, now it's called Rivero, R-E-V-E-R-O. I'm gonna appear on their podcast for the second time in about three days. They asked me to come on again, very nice, so I'll come on and talk about tinnitus and probably about oxalate, to be honest. Um, anyway, he used to be an orthopedic surgeon, which is joints, hips, elbows, fingers, knees, you know, very expensive surgeries, like incredibly expensive. And he was a top of his class, blah, blah, blah. He was amazing. So of course he got recruited to work in this um, clinic. And you know, you have um, uh, generally when a, the way a specialist works, and this includes ENTs and dentists, is, is, is if you, you have a um, consulting room, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you have theater uh, Thursday, Friday, maybe it's broken up. Any specialty or dentist listening now or ENT listening, because I know ENTs start to listen to me now, will know this is true. And what Sean started to do was say, you know what? And, and you know, he was pulling in like fucking, I don't know, 50 grand a month. I don't know, you'll have to, okay, that might be incorrect, but you might have to listen to his um, story himself, okay? If I got that wrong, I apologize. But you know, he was at least pulling that in for the business. I'm not sure what his cut is. And so the owner of the clinic, you know, Sean, sorry, he worked for the owner of the clinic. Sean was not the owner. Sean was just a, a doctor there. And then Sean started to go, you know what? If I just tell these people to stop guzzling Coca-Cola and eating carbohydrates and stop being such fat slobs and take care of their health, and that's what they were, let's be honest, then they can avoid surgery. And he started doing that. And people would come in, you know, you come in for a consultation, okay, you're ready for surgery next month. Hey, before next month, I want you to cut out the grains, I want you to exercise more, you know, whatever, like be healthy, just don't be an idiot. Stop, stop walking through the doors of McDonald's for two weeks and watch the magic happen, right? And they wouldn't need surgery anymore. And do you know what the owner of that uh, clinic tried to do? He tried to sue Sean for medical malpractice and get his license taken away so that he could get someone else in who would do the wrong thing, cut the person open, give them the surgery, and make them the $15,000. I'll say it again. If you think doctors are not in it for the money, you are fucking out of your mind. You are fucking out of your mind. I don't want to hear about, oh, my doctor's nice. Great. Maybe they are nice. But the fact of the matter is, and I'll reiterate it again, their education is not conducive to fixing you. You know how Sean found out about uh, diet changes, avoiding orthopedic surgery, testing it on himself and looking outside of the medical literature that was given to him. Why don't they teach us in medical school? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's obvious now, everyone, everyone's like, most people are waking up to this bullshit now, but you, I just wanna get this into your head, guys, that doctors, doctors are, they're put in a certain place, okay, to sell you. That is all they are. Well, this is when it comes to acute problems, not chronic. ENTs are exactly the same. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna talk about <coughs> common attitudes. Uh, oh, I've lost them. So I'm gonna read from my book now that I am um, been writing for a while. And by the way, guys, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can raise your hand now and ask anything you want. But until then, I'm going to read this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> your mentality underpins your silence. Okay. <clears throat> this might seem out of character for someone like me to say, even hypocritical, seeing as I avidly promote lifestyle changes over emotional work, uh, over emotional work and therapy, but it is true your mentality does underpin your silence. I would first like to speak on a relationship between methods such as meditation, relaxation, cranial sacral therapy, and how they can potentially reduce tinnitus. These are methods that can, and in some instances, should be used to supplement, not be the, not be the be all and end all, supplement a person's journey to tinnitus, but they are not the be all and end all of obtaining silence. Emotional work will usually not deliver a person's silence alone. In fact, it's usually a guarantee. A great example of this 
of how emotional work alone will not give a person, usually not give a person the silence. Okay. A great example of this is the enlightened author of the book, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. That guy has tinnitus. It doesn't get much more emotionally stable than him. So if you guys don't know who Eckhart Tolle is, okay, Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle, whatever he's called, is a dude who is enlightened, and I'm sure he is, I do believe it, and he's helped a lot of people. But he has apparently, in his own words, roaring tinnitus. And even in his book, if you've read it, he talks about how he has tinnitus. It doesn't get much more relaxed than that guy, okay? Stop thinking that emotional work alone is going to get you silence. Even uh, Julian Cohen Hill, he's great. He talks about craniosacrotherapy. He didn't get silence until he changed his diet. I want everyone to be aware of that. Julian Cohen Hill, who helps a lot of people, craniosacrotherapy relaxation, didn't get silence himself until he changed his diet. He says it himself in his videos, okay? It's n when it comes to for silencing tinnitus, it is never one thing. It's just not, and that is a fact. Back to the book. In fact, Someone who obtains silence from relaxation methods alone um, often have common re-emergences of tinnitus through the rest of their lives. So you understand what I'm saying there? Even if you can manage to get a brief period of silence from relaxation, it'll re-emerge. Okay. They often have common re-emergences of tinnitus throughout the rest of their lives should they miss few too many 20-minute meditation sessions or experience high levels of stress. You understand what I'm saying? That easy come, easy go is what I'm trying to say. Seeing as life is busy and sometimes meditation is skipped or forgotten and emotional volatility is a guarantee in life, like loss of a job, loss of a friend, blah, blah, blah. I believe selling emotional work, quoted, as a sole way to silence a person's tinnitus pales in comparison to using it alongside other lifestyle changes. So there, there I say it again, okay? Meditation and relaxation alone is not usually a solution or permanent solution to tinnitus. It is a band-aid. And as life rips open the wound again and again, so must the band-aid be reapplied. You understand what I'm saying? It is not as bad as the concept of habituating, though. <laughs> Habituation is such a joke. <laughs> habituating to tinnitus essentially means the patient is taught to learn to accept and live with the sound of tinnitus in their lives. To make it, quote-unquote, a friend. Yeah, fuck that. Okay. Multiple steps in the right order, slowly, safely, and in a relaxed manner is by far the best way to silence tinnitus I have ever seen. And if I ever see something better, I'll talk about it. I'm going to give you the key to silence in this book, but if you manage to reduce your tinnitus drastically and silence seems just out of reach, this, there are many causes of this, but this can often be due to your mentality, your state of mind, as well as, as, well as a few other things. More on this in the topic of the chapter, one to zero. That's the final chapter in the book, which shows people uh, the common steps people miss when they get the tinnitus down to a one or a two, how to go all the way and get it to a zero and keep it there. Okay, subchapter two. Is this you? There are a few telltale signs in some clients I see that indicate to me that they will struggle to obtain complete silence. And in some rare instances, find it hard to achieve even somewhat moderate results. This is the truth. Sadly, these are the people who do often give up because before, they even, uh, because before even starting, their expectations of what is required in order to achieve silence were not set up properly. Here are some examples of what I see repeated again and again in unsuccessful clients. Once again, unsuccessful clients, that is determined by their attitude, not by their actions. You understand? So here, here are the um, personality traits in unsuccessful clients. Constantly assessing every change in their ears daily or hourly and becoming frustrated when they don't know the exact cause behind fluctuations or what they mean. Elation when tinnitus reduces and total despair when tinnitus increases slightly. In other words, extreme emotional volatility. Constantly asking the same technical questions over and over again, but in different ways. Requiring, that, that basically means requiring constant reassurance. Not good rushes through the course, often resulting in incorrect implementation in the wrong order, sometimes even resulting in a worsening of symptoms. Using myself, so me, or others in the group as references to ensure correct implementation instead of referring back to the course. Now, I just want to take a second. I see this a lot. So guys, of course, this is the book that's going to be included for free in the course update. 
but you could use this to look at also my free information online. When someone posts online on my, that's, you, want, you guys wonder why the comments are disabled on my YouTube and Instagram? I'll tell you why, and this is rough. Because when people get together, they always get negative. It becomes a pity party. And I'll be fucking damned if my YouTube channel or Instagram is going to turn into Tinnitus Talk 2.0. Not on my watch. It's not going to happen. And I see it a lot. And it's very frustrating when people comment and say, hey guys, I have tinnitus, what do I do? That person, I'm sorry to say, is very unlikely to ever get silence in their entire life because the answers are there. Now, I don't know if it's laziness. It's definitely not being too busy. If you have time to find my channel and watch videos, you're not too busy. Okay, I once had one girl said, oh, I, you know, too long, didn't read, Liam. What do I do? Um, how do I silence my tinnitus? And I said, this, this person is never going to get silenced. Like, you just, you know, they're like, oh, I'm too busy. No, no one is too busy. Stop watching Netflix for three hours. Don't go, to the, don't go to brunch with your friends, whatever, and just watch the videos, okay? So when people refer to other people, they make many mistakes, okay? One of them being, everyone is different. Yes, the process of eliminating tinnitus, the steps are all the same, but you might need a different order, a different dose of something. You understand what I'm saying? They might have mold in your house and you might not. And then what it does is it gives a sense of jealousy and overwhelm. So the most successful people, and this happens again and again, people buy my course, okay, and they join the Facebook group, and then they leave the Facebook group in about a week. Because unfortunately, even, even the Facebook group is, it's great, there are many people who get help, but a lot of the time it's, it's confusing, there are lots of moving parts. The course is easy, and this goes to my videos too. That's why I got rid of the comments, so people can't get together, confuse each other, and post ridiculous shit about, you know, oh, take 25 milligrams of curcumin, whatever, a day for a month. No, shut up. That's not, that's not true. It's just selling you something that's bullshit. So you see what I'm saying there? So successful people stick to what works. It's as simple as that. Okay, moving on. Believing, okay, this is an unsuccessful person, believing that obtaining silence will be quick, linear, and easy process. Not true at all. If you've, you got to remember guys, your tinnitus, diseases take years to set in. So if you think that you're going to get silence in a month, I don't know who you told, who told you that, but <laughs> ask for a refund. Okay. And then the last one of the unsuccessful person compares, compares themselves to others inside and outside the course. Once again, why I deleted the, um, the comments. Okay. Now let's move on to the successful people. Inversely, there are also signs that indicate to me that a client will most likely obtain silence, not necessarily quickly, but with minimal emotional turmoil and complete success uh, forever. Here are some examples. Again, first one, inactivity in the Facebook group. That's like the number one thing. The number one thing. Who cares what everyone else is doing? Who gives a shit? Just focus on yourself. Next, not becoming discouraged during spikes, nor elated during reductions in volume. Just maintaining an eye on the prize. Silence. Minimal questions asked. Almost no reassurance needed. The person truly believes I will get to silence and does not mind how long it takes or what it takes. Finally, uh, no, sorry, next, takes it slow and does not rush. Hope you guys are paying attention to this. It, which one are you? Are you this one or the one I was mentioning before? Because it matters. Using the course as a reference for correct, or you, you know, you could say using the course or using my YouTube videos. Using the course as a reference for correct implementation instead of others or myself in the group. So if you're just focusing on my free information, which is fine, that would translate to using my free content as a, as a guide to what to do and not other people's comments who are not you. You understand? Next, the successful person does not think that obtaining silence will be quick, linear, and easy process. In other words, <laughs> their feet are pl firmly planted on the ground in reality and they understand what is required of them. And finally, they support other people if needed. I would also like, okay, that's that, okay? I would also like to point out that there are some crossovers and clients do go between the two types. That is normal. We are human after all. Someone might start as a negative person and then they might end up being a positive person. That is absolutely fine. If you've seen some uh, traits there that are not desirable, you think, holy crap, that's me. Just, you know, focus on changing over to the better person. Okay. I think I was going to go over one more thing. 
Um, but I think I've said enough today. Uh, we'll keep it really simple. But which one of those people are you? Because it matters. Because once again, I'll reiterate, I'll say it again. It doesn't matter your medical history, your age, the cause, where you live, how much money you make, who you live with, blah, blah, blah. The only thing that matters is your attitude and your ability to change your lifestyle. That is the only thing that matters. If you're a man, reach in your pants and remember that you've got balls and use them, you know? And a woman, I don't know what you would grab, but find something, grab onto it and remember who you are. Don't be a, don't be a sook, as we say in Australia. You can do it. I, really, I, you know, I believe in you, I really can. And I wanna get those testimonials because I love them. I, it makes my fucking day. I've got the best job in the world. No one has a better job than me. I fucking love it. All right, so we're going to wind up there. I know that people usually wait until the end to ask questions, but if anyone has any questions, now is the time. The time is nigh, okay? The time is, the time is now, whatever. So I'll wait a couple of minutes. Once again, if you don't follow me on social media, on Instagram, it's Liam underscore stops underscore tinnitus, and my YouTube is the same name, Liam stops tinnitus. Take it slow, take it safe. Tonight, this is not for life. Hearing loss, TMJ, vertigo, hyperacusis, pulsatile tinnitus, Meniere's disease. You know the whole thing. Okay. Doesn't look like anyone has any questions today. Guys, This is if you have any questions at all, today, right now is your chance. You can literally ask the person with the most successful tinnitus course in the world a question. Probably a good idea. Don't be shy. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, have a lovely day. The replay is going to be up on Instagram and YouTube. And I uh, hope you enjoyed today. Thanks for tuning in. Ciao.